Sí, lo estaba buscando. Hello class, good evening, welcome. Can you listen to me? Hello? Good evening teacher, good yes, evening. I can hear you. Great, thank you so much, Joel, for confirming. I appreciate that. How was your day? It was a busy day, and what about yours? Was it? Well, mine was really busy too, a little bit tiring, because today I teach PE at school, but you know, it's a good way of doing exercise. Well, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you so much for asking to Howell and Emma. Welcome, Daniel, welcome. Today is Thursday and for us it's Friday because tomorrow there's no classes. And welcome to your uh, session number nine. So I think everybody has finished the no, meeting. No, no, no. Right, and well, we're gonna, have some time today to reinforce a topic which we left pending yesterday. And this topic is how to make indirect questions. And that's gonna be the main focus for today, okay? So um, the section remains, this is section number three. If you are not speaking for anything in the class, I will appreciate if you can turn off your mic, okay? So let's get started. And yesterday we talked about uh, how to make indirect questions. And I said that we were going to retake this today. And I want to start by displaying the sentences that we um, left yesterday pending. Because I wanted to, I want to hear, you know, one more time, how can you ask these questions indirectly to Jennifer? So um, let's see how many are connected as of now. So four people connected plus me. So um, who would like to ask the first question in indirect way? Any volunteer guys? See? Any volunteer? So how can we ask this indirectly? Indirectly, how do we do it? Anyone who would like to participate. And the question is, why do we need to you know, make it like this? Do we really need to ask questions indirectly? 
or it's just, you know, a waste of time. Is there a reason for this? Or what can you tell me about it? So ask this question indirectly. You don't remember? Uh-huh, yes, Joel. The first one. Okay, yes. Okay. The first one, um, for example, could it be, uh, could you ask Jenny if she know, knows where is going, where is the party? Hmm, okay, I see. Do you agree with this, Emma? Let's listen to what Emma says, Joel. Did you listen to Joel's uh, sentence? Yes, I, I heard it. Well, I'm pretty sure about it. I didn't be in the last part of the class yesterday, but I remember that we were working. If we have WH questions, maybe we can use the last, the last request. In the request introduced by a question word, it could be, can you ask Jennifer? Where is the party or something like that? Oh, interesting. I want to hear more ideas. Let's see. Now more people have joined. Reina Gustavo is here. Daniel is here. Daniel Gardo, Daniel Palacio. How could you ask the first question indirectly? We have heard two opinions and I hear little mistake in the, this example. So what is the mistake? No problem, no problem. I'm going to go over some details first. And I'm pretty sure that after I have gone through this explanation, you might have a clearer idea as to what is missing here or what is needed for us to ask indirectly. Uh, I'm gonna come back to these questions at, at the end of the class to see if it's clearer, or maybe um, you know, I will provide some other examples so we can study this topic. And I understand this because I remember when I was at the university, this, this topic was, um, does this topic cause a lot of um, let's talking? I don't want to say confusion in that class because we tend to speak, you know, with we tend to ask indirect questions by asking double questions, and this is not the, the right way to do it. And that's why I want to go over this topic again because I consider it's going to be very important to be clear on this. I hear people speaking the language and making this mistake. And if I identify myself with who is just an what an, an Spanish speaker, I imagine when an American people listen to us speaking that way, they clearly identify the mistake. So let's go over some things, some details about it. First of all, when when these questions are used, I want to say this, guys, for formal occasions. Okay. So formal occasions can be maybe talking to strangers, teachers, formal occasions, maybe you are, a, I don't know, maybe at a conference, you are in any place where you cannot be that impolite. Okay, then we need to use uh, this type of indirect questions. So this is the when formal occasions, okay? And then now the why I just said it because it is important for us to be really polite. I think uh, practicing or wearing our values in any occasion is the best um, image, the best uh, thing we can display or, or demonstrate at any, at any time in any occasion. So being polite is the best thing we can do. Now, um, so we have said when, you know, and why? Now, how? And that is very important. Let me go next. Let me see, let me, next, how? And pay attention to this, because I really want you to provide me with examples, okay? So how, a sentence, 
uh, with two clauses. Guys, we have already said that a, that a clause is simply a sentence, okay? A sentence which contains a subject, a verb, and what? A complement or a predicate, right? Now, the sentence, the second clause contains a question, right? But, this is important, but the structure of the second question is in sentence form. Let me say one more time that this uh, type of questions has one question in the second clause because we have two clauses, right? But the second sentence is not in question form. So basically, this becomes a sentence structure, affirmative statement. And this is exactly what I heard in the, in the uh, contributions given by the first two participants today. Uh, I hear the, the mistake I'm telling you because you are making the second question as if it is another question, but that's not the point. We have to make it in a, in a sentence form. So let's get started so we can uh, go over this a little bit deeper. Like we have here. Now, I need your participation, okay? So who wants to help me with the, these lines with the first one? Regular one, any volunteer, only go over by reading it let's see maybe we have somebody thank you emma go ahead read the purple letters regular questions what is your college in oh yeah please do it thank you so much okay what qualification do you need to apply how much does a course cost thank you so much all these ones read by Emma are considered regular questions. In other words, direct questions. So if I ask Emma, where is your college? I know she will respond directly, right? And then uh, qualifications, do you, what qualifications do you need to apply? Well, direct question, regular question. And the last one, you know, the one Emma just read, this is also a regular question. Now, how do we make it indirect? And that's the point here. And then um, now I need another volunteer to read the indirect way. Just one. Teacher. Thank you so much, Daniel. Read it, please. Thank you, Daniel. Go ahead. Second one. Daniel, you here? Would you like to read it for us? Yes, teacher. I hear okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much. Please go over uh, this. Let me let me circle. Can you read the one I'm just circling? Okay. Yeah. Indirect questions. Would you mind tell telling me where your college is, please? Do you know that qualification you need to open? I was wondering how much a course cost. Thank you so much. First of all, we have after mine, we have already said that we need to use ING, right? This is just a phrase we have here. And now first clause, guys, it's just a question or a phrase that will be introducing our question on the second clause, right? And the second one is not in question four, it is in statement four, right? Where your college is, is not where is your college? We say where your college is. And then please, it's just optional to make it even more polite, all right? So we do not say, would you like telling me where is your college? It will be a mistake. A big mistake. We say, would you mind telling me where your college is? We leave the bird to be by the end because we have to make it like a statement. So if it is a statement, it's subject, and then we have the bird. We don't make we don't make the inversion. Okay. So this is the first example with the bird to be. Take a look at the second one. We have do you need to apply? We have one auxiliary verb, which is do, right? And then we have our introductory phrase, which is, do you know? 
Do you know? Do you know? So the second clause is not a question. It must be a statement for how do we do it? Do you know what qualification you need to apply? Do you know what qualifications you need to apply? And that's it. You don't need to use the do auxiliary here because it's not a question. Same thing in the next one. The, the uh, direct one is how much does a course cost? And then we don't say does in the next uh, and then direct one. We say, I was wondering, which is the introductory phrase, how much a course costs? And then we add the S sound because it's third person. Of course, is it. We need to say costs. So that's the way it works. Statement four. Before moving on, I want you to please open your microphone or, or the chat and send me one example of each category. One with bird to be, like this one. One with uh, do and one with does. Maybe you want to think about the regular and then the indirect one. I suggest using the introductory phrases that I have given. Would you mind telling me? Do you know? And I was wondering. So I will give you three minutes, one each minute for you to create your own examples, okay? Try, please. Okay, okay. I, I think I have the first messages in here. I want to read them. Uh -huh. Would you mind? Let's see. Would you mind? Would you mind how much is the green card? Hmm, Daniel. Um, remember this, okay? If we have, would you mind? We mind. I mean, we need to use ing form, okay? Would you mind? And then you need the you need, uh, you can say, would you mind telling me how much, uh, but I cannot say how much is the green card because if I say how much is the green card, it has a question for it, okay? So that's not the intention, okay? Please uh, think about how to make it in the sentence, sentence for, I mean, in, um, yeah, sentence for, that's the one. Hello? Yeah, I, I listen to you. Okay, for the first one, uh, the first form, mm -hmm. I, I I write uh, or or I choose that example. Would you mind telling me uh, what time BMT opens, please? Yes, I like it. Correct. Nah. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. For oh. the next, uh, do you know what documents you need to renovate? Uh, the driver license. I don't know if if renovate is. We can idea. say update. 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 Yeah. Update. I would say update. I rather use update. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, update. It will be the. Yeah, because if you want to update something, is yeah, you want to change it. You want to put it up to date because yeah. it is right. I would say update, the best option. And I like your examples, Gustavo. I think they're really accurate. 
And then Daniel needs to double check that one, please. And why is my mom? What is my mom doing? Can you tell me what my mom is doing? Yeah, I like that one. Very good, uh, Emma. You got it. What is your favorite place? Can you tell me what your favorite place is? Reina, there you nail it down. Very good. Where is the National Hospital? Would you mind telling me where the National Hospital is? Very good, Angie. And well, where did you buy those shoes? Would you mind telling me where you bought those shoes? Lovely. Yes. Awesome. So this is exactly the way we have to uh, ask indirectly. Okay. I still want to read some other ideas from everybody who's in this room. Okay. Uh, but we're going to have more time. So let me move on because we have some other ideas and I want you to participate as much as you can. All right. Let's move on. Let me see. Uh, hmm, let me clear this out. Here we go. Let me now uh, move to the next slide and take a look at this one. And I want you to please, if it's possible, I'm gonna give you some time, write all these expressions down. All of these guys are considered introductory clauses because they will give us the, you know, the main idea in the sentence as to, um, I mean, how to start the, the, the question, okay? So take some time. I don't know. Tell me. Do you know? Can you tell me? Uh, do you have any idea? I wonder. Okay. And then you are the previous one. Would you mind telling? Okay. So I'm going to give you three minutes. Write these introductory phrases, please. Maybe you want to write then like one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I have six. And then seven. Uh, and then we're going to create sentences with this because I do want you to use all of them. Okay, so take three minutes to write to write them down. All right, I can see we have here some um, examples. Emma, what musical instrument do you need to play in the concert? Do you know what musical instruments you need to play in the concert? Yes, very good. Very good, okay, awesome. So take some time, write these ideas, please. Give it two more minutes. Teacher, can you put the last slide, please? The previous one, yeah, sure. Yes. This one? Yes, uh, thanks. I just wanted to take a screenshot that I did it. Thanks. Right, thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, hmm. I have some, let me go to the next one because I was, okay. Now, let's see, I think I have some ideas here. Uh, can, yeah. can you hear me uh, with the structure for you? I don't know, I don't know. I need to add, uh, uh, explicit question in the second clause, for example, I don't 
know how to fix my car, I recommend, I don't know, or, or I need better structure. Okay, thank you so much for that question. Let me um, give you an example. Or maybe imagine, that was Daniel, right? Daniel, imagine you and I are sitting, um, then waiting at a, let's say bus stop, right? And then you and I are, we don't know, we don't know each other. And then if, if, I, if I get closer to where you are and I say, I don't know what time it is. And then would you answer my question if you are the only one who's there or you will just ignore my statement? If I say, well, this is very late. I don't know what time it is. And then what is expected uh, is that you, if you are an educated person, you address my, my expression. My, so I'm, it's like, I make a question for, Oh, or for myself and I, with another person uh, next to you request to answer i don't exactly, know exactly it's, it's like it's like you don't want to ask directly because that's the point right but you okay. do you do need to be responding i mean you need somebody to respond to you so if i say um it's like in spanish like no sé qué hora son and then I bet somebody, if somebody's educated next to you, this person will say, it's this time. So, but you don't want to ask it because that person might be a stranger. But so that's okay. the point. That's the point. The point is to- I, I am asking to the environment, <laughs> expecting to someone- To be polite. Answer. Yeah. To be polite. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like you, you ask, right? Okay, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What about the other ones? And it, it'll be great if you can create uh, one sentence for each of these introductory clauses. Uh, I'm thinking because imagine you are at the mall, right? Metro Centro. And then uh, you're looking for a store, but, but you don't know what, where this store is. And then you ask somebody, and then how would you say it? Maybe you're looking for the, the restaurants, the bathrooms, then you are in a rush, you know, you just you wanna get you know, to these places and then uh, you wanna be polite because you want to be helped. So how can you ask it? And oh, another thing guys, the tone of voice you make will also influence in the, in the meaning, in the intended meaning, okay? So think about those possible scenarios. There are many you know, scenarios we can bring to this discussion. Let me see. I think we have some others in here. I want to read them. Let's see. All right. Uh -huh, Angie's. Where's Natalia? Do you, do you know? Do you know, Angie, you're missing the subject, where Natalia is? Yes. Where did you hear that song? I heard that song at my girlfriend's house. That would be a, a normal or regular question, Daniel. That's, a, that's okay. But then how can you ask this question indirectly, not to the person you're speaking? Maybe um, you're asking this, I mean, you do want this person to answer in this scenario, but then you don't want to sound like as if uh, you, I don't know, you don't, what? As if you're not polite, as if you um, don't respect or depend, right? So think about those scenarios. Let's see the other example from Gustavo. Do you have any idea how much the license drivers cost. Uh -huh. Do you have any idea how much? Boom, statement, how much, right? Um, the license driver, the driving license is the one. <clears throat> driving license. Driving license. Uh, okay. drive, driving license cost. And then costs, right, uh, with a sound. Mm -hmm. Then we have, could you give me an idea 
to give flowers or chocolate? Mm. Could you could you give me an idea to give um this one? I'm trying to get it in. Could you give me an idea? The point is, how do we make a second statement within the same uh, question? Because the point here, guys, is to have two clauses. All right, two clauses, two sentences. One uh, introductory clause and the second one statement four. That's why the one Daniel just sent. Um, I have no idea what what he likes. Makes sense the idea, but still, you need to think about the two clauses. How you can link them. This one is is closer to what we're looking for, Daniel. Uh, think about one more. I will appreciate that. Uh, I would say security guard, uh, Emma. Security guard, security guard, or um, what do you call this? Depends in my company they used to call them uh yeah security guard security guard can you type it, it yeah. please yeah security like security guard i just send it to you directly thank you do you have any idea what type of charger i need for a motorola cell phone yes yeah you don't say, do I need, right? You say, I need, very good. That's, okay. What's, what are some other um, examples that you can think about? Okay, I'm gonna give you some more time. I do wanna see more sentences here, okay? Right, I have well, I wonder if my neighbors have heard me singing. <laughs> okay. And then imagine one of your neighbors is next to you and they might say, Yeah, I have. And you sing and then they give you an attitude. Yep. I wonder if I like this one. We're gonna discuss this in a minute, you know. All right, uh, any other that you want to provide? Give you two more minutes. Think about it. Think about some other. What other, uh, where else can you use it at an airport, uh, at a different country where, where you don't know anybody? What else? At university? Mm -hmm. Scenarios where at the gym, if you go, um, Plaza Mundo, hmm. Galerias, La Gran Vía, uh, Metro Centro, at the mall. So I wonder if I knew, I don't know where the town hall, where the town hall is. Do you? Um, I like this one, Joel because uh, you are even asking a question tag at the end, right? Mm -hmm. And you feel like adding this, right? Even though uh, if you say, do you? I mean, that's okay. But then I would say by only saying, I don't know where the town hall is. I bet somebody who, you know, might listen to you saying will answer, okay? And try this, try this out, try it. Maybe uh, even in Spanish, um, I know somebody will respond because uh, there's always you know somebody who's willing to participate or, or or help. But then adding the question tag "Do you" makes it even clearer or explicit. All right. So um, I have heard some of your examples, Daniel. I have I didn't listen to any other. Uh, let's see. And I think Evelyn, I don't know who else. Let's move on. I have some other ideas. This ones, okay. We have now 
main clause and in the in and dependent clause. This is just a way to call them technically, but then at the end, same thing. We have this with WH questions, okay? And then WH questions, it just becomes we use when, where, even how it's included in the WH questions. We have some other uh, expressions here. Uh, I like to know, tell me, I don't know, I wonder. And then we have the WH question. I like to know when the course starts. What's the next one, Angie? The next one here? The first one, the main clause. Yeah, the, the second one, tell me. Read all these, please. Depend clause? Mm -hmm. Main and dependent clause, all oh, the two ones. Okay, when the course starts, where your college is, how much the course costs. Thank you so much. So these are the dependent clauses, right? We link then with the main clause, which is the one we have said already that are only introductory phrases. Now, um, we also have yes, no questions. And what do you see in this one? What's different from the previous one? What it's something that it's a key. We need to know when asking um, just no questions, not open questions, just no question. What are we using here? Condition, using if or whether. Exactly, exactly, very good. If we are going to ask just no question, we need to use if or whether. This is exactly what you just said. Thank you so much, because we cannot make it, you know, indirectly if we don't, if we don't add these uh, two conditions or uh, this uh, magic word, I will say. Do you know if there is a financial help for overseas students? Could you tell me if there is blah, blah, blah? Do you have any idea whether we can visit Cambridge before we start? Now, second exercise. Please uh, start working on this, guys. Create one with question words or WH questions and one with yes, no. And this time, as the previous exercises, give me the, the what, the um, direct question, okay? I think I have one. Do you know when? Holiday start. That's a good one. Actually, that's a, that's a really good one, Daniel. Do you know when the holidays start? Holiday, I think uh, this holiday starts, I think, on the 9th or on the 8th. No, remember. Uh -huh, but of yeah. April. <laughs> that's a good one. Holiday start starts holiday and that's singular I know you added the letter S but say holiday starts um, okay what others think about one Daniel with uh, just no because the one you just sent is WH because it has when what about yes no WH question or just no question, the example? Both, please. Thank okay. you so much. Hey, guys, did you watch the soccer uh, game yesterday, the soccer match? You don't like watching? We yeah. don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <Okay. laughs> Let me see if I, can, if I can remove anybody from this conversation. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, I can do it. Wow, I didn't know I had that power. Okay. I mean, I do know, but then uh, since this is protected by Insafor. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah.
it was it was good actually many things many comments but okay let's imagine i don't know i, I have i don't know anything about this uh, soccer match and i say do you know if real madrid won i don't say uh, you know if did did real madrid win right so that's the point not to make double questions okay um, I invite you, my friend, Gustavo, to, to watch again the, the summary, the highlights, <laughs> and listen to the comments. <laughs> okay, um, so let's see what you have written here. Can you tell me whether or not we can visit uh, Ilopango Lake? Yes, yes, now we're talking. Can you tell me whether or not you're going to go to the party with me. Yes, okay. Do you know if dad left the keys of the car in the house? Good. Can you tell me whether the teacher right today at the school? Lovely. We have good examples here. I, I still want to give one more minute because I haven't seen on all of you guys and we are connected eight plus me. So I need to see at least eight or 16 because it's one of each of each uh, example. I have only read like three or four. Come on. Right. Do you know if I don't see anybody else right, type any? And the problem here is that this is now Facebook, uh, nor is it WhatsApp. I don't see if somebody's typing. I cannot predict this. I'm just thinking you guys are doing it, but when it's like one minute and nobody, I mean, there's no messages in the chat. I said, no, nobody was was typing in anything. All right, let's move on. Now, if you don't want to participate on that, I'm gonna give you some exercise for you to resolve it. So, uh -huh, I'd like to know where, uh, I'd like to know where my dog, Fermin, is. Just change the is. Okay, uh, exactly, you change it now. Okay, now let's, well, we'll take a look at this one, just, just, just to reinforce that. Quick grammar tips. Remember, we when you are writing uh, the dependent clause, uh, okay, in an uh, indirect question, do not use do, does, or did. For example, where did the teacher go? We do not say, do you know where did the teacher go? Mm -mm. We say, do you know where the teacher went? That's it, because the did is uh, unnecessary. Therefore, we use the, the verb in the past form. Simple as that. Do you know where the teacher went? Do you know, say, do you know where the teacher did go, blah, blah, No, directly, you know, now this time we just make it like without the auxiliary, we only say, do you know where the teacher went? Okay, keep that in mind, no auxiliaries in the second uh, the dependent clause. After WH word, this is what I think Gustavo already pointed out. After WH word, we use if or whether, okay? Uh, use a sentence, not a question. Remember that, okay? Now it's time to practice, all right? I'm gonna give you some time and here we go. I'm gonna give you five minutes and please solve this, uh, these ones. One, two, three, four, five, maybe less than five minutes. When you have the answers, please uh, send me a message. I'm gonna be here waiting for your answers.
teacher. You finish, Joel. Yeah, but, but you stop the screen and I and I'm missing the last one. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought okay, no problem. Here we go. Thank you. All right, so let's go over these examples, guys. I think time is over. It's uh, since I have given you, I would say, the appropriate time, I would like to uh, share it at once and you compare your answers on your own. Okay, let's see. Uh, so what's your name? What are you from? What kind of room would you like? And do you have any hobbies? And what do you want to study? Well, uh, take a look at this one now. Do you have the same? Can you compare? I'll give you one minute for you to compare. Wondering. Wondering. No. Uh, the same? Just uh, at the second one, uh, it's necessary to add no or we need to remove. It's not necessary. Which I one? Want, want to know where, are, where you are from. I was wondering, did you say now? Not, not necessarily. No, it's not, it's, no, like this is okay. I was wondering where you are from, where you are from. And okay. then it's suggested to use a rising intonation. Can I ask, uh, can I ask you what your name is? Yes, like the, the big rising. I was wondering where you are from. I was wondering where you are from. And then number three, can you tell me what kind of room would you, you would like? Because if, if I say, would you like, sounds like really um, repetitive or redundant. Do you have any hobbies? I would like to know if you have any hobbies. And last one, what kind, I'm sorry, what do you want to study? I need, I need to know what you want to study. Let's do something. Uh, I want to hear how you pronounce it. I know they're kind of basic questions, but still. Uh, so Gustavo, read the first two ones. Joel, read the next two ones. And Emma, the last one, please. The direct and indirect. What's your name? Can I ask you what your name is? Where are you from? I was wondering where you are from. Okay, okay. Uh, third one, um, what kind of room would you like? Can you tell me what kind of room would you like? Do you have any hobbies? I would like to know if you have any hobbies. What do you want to study? I need to know what you want to study. Awesome, thank you so much. Well, that's really cool. And as of now, do you have any question? I was wondering if you have any question. Do you have any question? Teacher, I have, uh -huh. I have a question. 
about the the for the for sentence uh you use if but is it okay if i use whether i would like to know whether, whether you have any hobbies and i i want to ask you too which expression is more common if, if or whether that's really good honestly if is more common and if and whether have the same meaning in this context the only difference with weather is that weather is more uh, is mostly used when you give options okay and if it's only for a condition but then if you have the the chance to use if or whether uh, if is more common but if and whether have the same meaning but you can in this in this specific structure but then if you want to give options if doesn't give you that chance it's like maybe it's like whether giving you another use which is giving options whether or not so that's the only difference but you can use both okay both because yeah. in other sentences we we use whether or not but this time it's just whether it's weather. that was okay thanks for this exactly only only whether any any plays the same role as if exactly all right we have uh eight minutes and i have another exercise okay i know it's a lot of repetition but you know the only way to work on this is by working on practicing and let's let's do our best in the next seven minutes now and create this ones maybe we gonna have to do it like faster this time only complete the indirect question. Don't write the direct ones because there are many. Okay. I'll give you maybe three minutes or four, as much as you can do. Okay. I think people uh, are sharing. Can you tell me? Oh, okay. Can you tell me when the bus is it left? Well, or is it leaves? Number one. Okay, I can see Emma. Uh, when the bus leaves, okay, if she's exactly, exactly lives, exactly, Emma, we have two already, two more minutes, uh, let's work on this, we have five minutes left, what about you looking for the toilet, how can you say it, maybe open your mic, so it's faster, Anybody try, try, please. Uh, where is the toilet? The, the toilet one. Mm -hmm. um, will you tell me where the toilet is? Okay, thank you so much. Next one, Emma. How long? How can you say it? Uh, yes, is. Can you tell me how long you will need it? Awesome. Thank you so much. Next one, Daniel Palacios. Is she his sister? Do you do you know is she his sister? Okay, that one is okay. Thank you. That's number two. And what about, uh, let's see, Evelyn, for uh, what is wrong with that car? Uh, 
Would you happen to know? Then how would you say the compliment? Can you tell me what, what is wrong with the car? What is wrong with the car? Do you have the same answer? Let's see, uh, Gustavo Correas. I have a, would you happen to know what's wrong with the car is? Hmm. No, I think it's, it's wrong, yeah. Is at the end, it's not necessary in this scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, but then, so basically what, uh, I think it was Evelyn who said it. Yeah, in this case, what's wrong with the car, right? Uh, this is this time, because we have the adjective, it won't make sense if we leave at the end is, okay? Uh, so, but thank you so much. And what about next one? Let's see who hasn't participated. I think we go over again. Uh, Emma, next one, please. I was thinking, but I don't have the answer of that because I don't understand it. Uh -huh. Okay. Who came to the party? So who has the answer? Try, please, try. It's okay. You say how, who came to the party? Who came to the What happened here is that you don't have any auxiliary, you don't have any modal verb, so you just leave it as it is. Uh, who came to the party is a subject question. It doesn't have any, any subject in it. That's why uh, we can leave it like it is here. As you can see, who came here, who came to the party, there's no subject in it because we're looking for the subject, okay? So just leave it like, like it is. Okay, don't uh, try to change anything else because uh, that will remain its uh, structure. It doesn't change. But the next one, it does, right? So, well, does the bus take a long time? How would you say it indirectly? Wait, I'm thinking. So um, could it be, could you tell me if the bus takes a long time? Exactly. Yes, you need to use if or whether. And what about the next one? Let's see, uh, Daniel, what, what's the weather forecast? Me? Mm -hmm. um, do you know what's the weather forecast? Well, in this case, we need to change is by the end of the sentence. Do you know what the weather forecast is? Here in this scenario, weather is the subject. We need to, we need to make it in a statement form, okay? And uh, which platform does it uh, go from? So can you tell me which uh, platform? Um, and then what, would, what do we have? What platform? What's next? You tell me what platform? It? Uh -huh. Would you tell me what platform? Can you tell me which platform? Uh -huh. uh, Go, go from it. Mm, well, it will be, could you tell me what platform it goes? It goes, goes from, okay. exactly. And then I know it's, it's night already. So, Let's finish. So that's, that's is the auxiliary. Necessary, right? Exactly. And then okay. we apply the, the, the you know, uh, formula to the it because it's it, we say it goes. Okay. And then why is he late? Do you know why he is late? Uh, how far is it? Can you say uh, 
how far it is it is and that will be it well guys thank you so much for your participation thank you so much have a good uh weekend enjoy it rest if you are going to go out take care <laughs> okay have a good one and see you guys on monday bye bye take care see you monday everyone good night